Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Friday, November 14th, 2014. You can follow us on Twitter at CADEX TV. One of the most respected people in the reinsurance industry had some interesting comments down in Bermuda yesterday. As reported by the uh, Royal Gazette, Stephen Catlin said that reinsurance executives should not be so worried about what the future holds for their changing industry. Uh, he said that uh, fears over the impact on traditional reinsurers from the rapid influx of third-party capital have been overplayed. He said, quote, I believe that some of the fear that's been propagated is unfounded. He said, I saw one broker quoted as saying, it's the worst market in a generation. He must be four years old, quipped Mr. Catlin. He said he'd heard extreme talk about among reinsurance executives of structural changes in the industry and how it would, quote, never be the same again. He said that the alternative capital was going into what he called commodity products distinct from traditional reinsurance in which relationships played an important role. Catlin said that the commodity approach to reinsurance has its problems and noted that there are six policies out there right now where the trigger is in dispute. Mr. Catlin said that cyber risk and pandemic were two of the biggest threats he saw for the industry to contend with. Uh, he also said that the solution for these things would be to provide coverage to individual businesses. And uh, he said that another opportunity for reinsurers lay in improving process. He said the industry is archaic in terms of process and has not moved forward much in the 40 years he's been in the business. He closed with two fundamental points. He said we're very fortunate in that what we do have social has social value. We should be proud of that and we should talk about that. And he said, secondly, relationship counts. It's the foundation of our industry. When I began and got involved in this industry 20 years ago, if Mr. Catlin had said those things then, I would have disagreed with him. I thought that relationship did not mean that much and people were overpaying for it. I was wrong. Mr. Catlin is quite correct. The commodity products will stay in the commodity area, but it's going to be very difficult for them to move into the arena where an underwriter has to sit across from a broker or a client and give his or her word that they're going to be bound. Travelers Chairman and CEO Jay Fishman had posted an open letter on the company's website yesterday disclosing that he's been diagnosed with a neuromuscular condition which might affect his ability to walk. Fishman said that fortunately so far it's been slowly progressing but you might see me with a cane or other gear to help me get around. He said, you should know that I feel good and have the full support of our board and remain fully engaged and committed. A word yet on what the uh, condition is. One of the oldest money managers in the United States, Wilmington Trust down in Delaware, that manages an awful lot of old money, is apparently moving close to the insurance link security sector. They announced that they've hired two insurance link securities experts from Wells Fargo. It's going to grow their uh, insurance and reinsurance related trust business. Uh, they took uh, Todd Winchell and Robert Quinn from Wells Fargo and Wilmington indicated that they're going to make a concerted move now into this sector. So apparently old money has now too been attracted by the interest rates or the return rates. Back in September there was a uh, penetration of the White House security uh, system by a uh, disturbed man who apparently, you know, he didn't apparently, it's on film, uh, leaped over the fence, ran across the lawn and got into the White House. Yesterday the Department of Homeland Security released the first report about the Secret Service's actions that day and they uh, actually are a comedy of errors. The details uh, said that the accused intruder, Omar Gonzalez, was able to scale the White House fence, sprint all the way across the lawn, and make it into the East Room. Uh, the report notes that authorities had already been tracking Mr. Gonzalez uh, up to a month before. They also saw him an hour before when he was loitering around the fence and recognized him from uh, an earlier incident but did nothing about it. The uh, man jumped the fence. The message that the White House had been breached did not reach Secret Service personnel at the White House. Some officers on duty at the Northwest Gate on Pennsylvania Avenue didn't see him because a construction project blocked their view. Uh, they didn't know whether or not he was armed with lethal force when they did see him and decided not to shoot him, although Gonzalez did have a knife. Uh, they then followed the intruder into bushes outside the White House but lost sight of him. 
According to the report, this surprised the officers who believed that the bushes were too thick to be passable. They weren't too thick to be passable. Mr. Gonzalez got through them and got up to the front door. A canine officer who was stationed in a van in the White House driveway missed all of this because he didn't have his Secret Service earpiece in and was chatting on his personal cell phone on speaker. By the time he understood what was going on, Mr. Gonzalez was uh, closely uh, being followed by Secret Service agents, so the man decided not to release his dog for fear that he might attack the wrong person. Then when Gonzalez got into the house, he uh, was attacked by a female Secret Service agent who, instead of taking out her baton to hit him, uh, managed to brandish her flashlight. And uh, she threw it at him finally. Uh, she was overpowered, and it was not until Mr. Gonzalez began to run up the stairs toward the second floor that finally three other agents appeared and wrestled him to the ground. Not good. No wonder Mrs. Obama was irate with the Secret Service director when she returned that evening to the White House about the uh, security precautions for her family. The government of South Korea has banned uh, Asiana Airlines, the country's second largest carrier, from landing in San Francisco International Airport for 45 days. This is as a result of the uh, crash last July, which killed three passengers. Um, they uh, will not be permitted to fly from Seoul to San Francisco for 45 days. Asiana has strengthened pilot training, appointed a new CEO, and hired an official to oversee flight safety after Flight 214 crashed into a seawall short of the airport. Houston area firefighters are working to determine what caused a spectacular explosion at an asphalt plant in Houston yesterday, a rush hour that injured two workers. The plant was at the American Materials Asphalt Facility, uh, and the, the plant apparently has been rendered unusable for quite some time. Two workers were injured. And we've been noticing this story, but we'll mention it. Soldiers now in France have now joined the hunt for a young tiger that has been spotted on the loose near Disneyland in Paris and was later seen crossing a highway. About 12 troops, that's not exactly a big group, have been tapped to help scores of French police officers armed with tranquilizer guns who are looking for the elusive cat. Residents of Montrevain, about 25 miles east of Paris, have been warned to stay inside until the tiger's been caught. It's a, uh, uh, a baby tiger, apparently. It weighs about 100 pounds. It's a female. Um, it's been sighted a number of times, but uh, they don't quite know uh, where the tiger came from. They're speculating a visiting circus uh, might have been the source of the tiger. They have found footprints, so they're fairly certain they are, in fact, tracking a tiger, and there have been a number of sightings. So we wish the tiger well, and hopefully he'll be or she'll be caught without uh, being killed. Have a good weekend. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you Monday.